my friends? Are you excited like I am? Yes! I love math! Well, from a philosophical standpoint, math is a... No, it's not about that, my friends. It's about it just feels good to work with numbers, which is what we're going to be doing today. Yes! And our future animal of the... Oh, that's not an animal. That is an inanimate object. It is not alive. It's a record player. Oh, my goodness. Did you guys even know what that is? You're probably looking at that going, I don't know what that is, Mr. Wara. That's really strange. Yes, you know what? I'm dating myself. I am actually telling you that I'm old enough to have had one of these when I was a child. Well, the original ones anyway. Well, okay, feature record player of the day. Way to go. Uh, I guess we'll let you in in this uh, <laughs> video. Oh, weird. Kind of weird. I don't know. Let's go ahead and get into the lesson here. Look at our learning target. It states that students will be able to subtract fractions greater than or equal to one. Yes. It sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds very tasty. Mmm. I'm getting hungry. Okay. All right, Mr. Wara. Mr. Wara, you're getting really strange now. Okay, so here we have one and one fifth minus one half. All right, what we're going to do here in this particular problem is we are going to solve this problem. Uh, we have been actually solving uh, subtraction and addition problems with fractions, both pictorially, as Eureka likes to say, and numerically. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first thing I want to show you is I want to show you our problem we're representing one and one fifth. Okay, I will show this going like so. Here's my one and one fifth right here. And I can shade this in to show my one and one fifth. Now I'm gonna subtract one half. So here I have a whole, but I've taken that whole and I've split it in halves. I'm going to shade in just half. Woohoo! Yeah, I like how that looks. Now I have my one and one fifth minus one half, showing this with models. So I had my one and one fifth minus one half. I'm gonna go ahead and show this like I've done in previous videos. I'm gonna take this and separate this into two halves, which I know two halves make one whole. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my one fifth here. Now keep it in mind, these two guys, there's, you know, they're added together. They're part of the same number. And now I'm gonna subtract my one half. The reason why I'm setting up this way, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take one half away from the whole. Rather than worrying about taking the one half away from this entire mixed number, I'm going to take that one half away from that whole. So I'm going to show that on my model. First, I'm going to show how I can take my whole and just split it right down the middle in the half. Makes that really easy for accuracy. Now I'm going to show the half being taken away here with this black. So now the half's taken away, I can show that what I have here is I have one half that remains. And I also have one fifth that remains here. Well, here we go. We have one half and one fifth that remains over here, and we're going to be adding those two together. So my one half plus my one fifth. Well, I think you can see our problem here. We have two unlike denominators. We have halves and we have fifths. And so we can't add those together. We need to get that common denominator. We're getting to the point now when we're looking at our denominators. Now, yes, you've, you've learned that we can multiply those denominators and that's gonna give us a, a common denominator. And in this case, that's fine, the numbers are small. So you could always, always go ahead and get some multiples. And as you can see here, yes, 10 works. So now we're gonna go ahead and get tenths. Now, let's go ahead and change our model to represent the tenths. So we have already uh, split our one hole into a half, but we want to also make sure that it's represented in fifths. So let's go ahead and take that hole and represent that into fifths. Okay, now that one's in fifths as well. Now I have tenths, and I can also turn the other one into halves. Next, I can rename those fractions. This is now five tenths. The model depicts that as well. And now here I have two tenths and five tenths plus two tenths is seven tenths. So one and one fifth minus one half is equal to seven tenths. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I like that problem. I did, I really did. Again, we're gonna call this one method one, okay? Let's show this another way. 
Well, here we have our 1 and 1 fifth. And we're going to subtract 1 half. We're going to re represent this as the 1 half taken from the 1 and 1 fifth. The first thing I would like to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this into fifths then since we're taking all from that quantity. And I'm going to go ahead and shade in that amount again. But I'm going to call this whole amount here 6 fifths. Because I have 5 fifths here, which is my 1 whole plus my 1 more fifth. So now I have 6 fifths minus 1 half. Well, we can't subtract these that fraction. We can't subtract 1 half from 6 fifths because the denominators are the same. But we do know that we can get a common denominator of a tenth. So let's go ahead and make those into tenths. Since I have these all in the tenths now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is rename this because here we have 10 tenths and here we have 2 tenths. Oh, we actually have 12 tenths and we're wanting to take away 1 half and 1 half as we can see by our drawing is 5 tenths. So let's take away 5 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we've taken away 5 tenths because 1 half is equal to 5 tenths. Well, 12 tenths then minus 5 tenths is equal to 7 tenths. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Do you like how that looks? I like it. I do, I do. Oh, page master. Woohoo! Oh, whoa. Here we go. We have our, we had a record player. Now we have records. Very cool. <laughs> what is this music theme today? Now this one here, I'm going to solve this numerically. There won't be any, I won't use any models for this particular one. When I look at one and three quarters minus six sevenths, I think the way that I would like to solve this is, I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take my mixed number and put it in to an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one. And in that case, when you have one and three quarters, the easiest way to change that is taking your four times one, which is four, and then you add on the three and you get seven fourths. When you look at that, you can see four fourths plus three fourths is seven fourths. Now we need to get a common denominator. Now in this case, I know you've gotten really, really accustomed to multiplying the de denominators. So let's go ahead and do that. That would be 28. We are subtracting. So here we have four times seven because we're multiplying by sevens here is 28. So therefore the top has to be 49 because seven times seven is 49. Here we have, we're multiplied by fourths times four times four. That's going to give me 24 on the top. Leaving me with, looks like 25 over 28. 25 twenty-eighths. I can kind of check and see if my answer is reasonable. One and three quarters, okay? It's almost two. If I had one more quarter, I would have two. Six sevenths is practically a whole. So let you know that you're taking about a whole away. So if you took that one, approximately a whole, from one whole, you should have about three quarters left. By looking at this fraction, you can see 25 twenty-eighths is definitely uh, extremely close to one whole. So we didn't lose. So that seems like a reasonable answer. Next page. Ooh, now we have a record player and we have some records. Cool. And I also want to just quickly look at some mathematical practices here. Okay, mathematical practice. Ooh, I think it's four. Mathematical practice four talks about how we can model with mathematics. Uh, how we can make assumptions, we can estimate, make complex problems easier by modeling, by symbols, concrete models, we're using models, rectangular models, okay? And it just, it says, basically, I can recognize math in everyday life and use math uh, I know to solve everyday problems. All right, thank you, mathematical practice number four. And then we also have number five, which talks about using the appropriate tools strate strategically. So you can see here, I know when to use certain tools and to help me explore and deepen my math understanding. This time, um, what we are going to do is we are going to use a number line to solve this next problem. So that will be a tool that we're going to use. And of course, it's a great model. Okay, okay, for this particular one, then we're going to go ahead and model. So I think I would attack this problem then by first let's go ahead and label this isn't going to see exceed five since we have four and a half maybe I do my one two three four five one two and now looking at the denominators I can see that I have a half and I also have a third so obviously that's going to be a problem but we know that we could actually make yeah six out of that so I think I would want to divide up my number line in six so uh, three six is right in the middle. So then I just have to have my one and my two. And if that's a three, that would be a four and a five. Now I have six. There's my three sixths in the middle because that's one half. So here's one, two, three, 
4, 5, and then 6. And that's how easy that is. Okay, so now I can go ahead and think of my 4 and a half. Now, that is 3, 6, so this is my starting point right here. Okay, so here's my, my 4 and a half. Now I'm going to go ahead and just take off 3. If I take 3, the whole number part, wouldn't that just give me, bring me all the way to 1 and a half? Because 4 minus 3 is 1, but with a half. So 4 and a half, so we'll do a count by 1. So 3 and a half is over here. And then I have 2 and a half. And then I have to take one more whole, 3. That's going to bring me to 1 and a half. So this here was subtract 3. Now I need to subtract 2 thirds. But since we can convert that into 6, and that's 4 6, we can actually count our 6. So we're right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 right here. So this was subtract 4 over 6. And what does that leave us with an answer? Well, it's located here on the number line. All we have to do is just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, looks like 5, 6. So I'm going to say that this is 5, 6 right here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do the algorithm and see if that indeed is true. So I'm going to go ahead and do the algorithm here. Double check my work. 1 half, 4 and a half, minus 3 and 2 thirds. Oh, since I have two mix two mixed numbers here. I'm going to go ahead and go straight to putting them in fractions greater than one. So four uh, and one half uh, would be nine halves, nine halves minus, and here I'm going to have thirds. So that would be nine thirds plus two thirds, which is 11 thirds. Now I need to go ahead and, and rename the fractions and equivalent fractions. I see a common de denominator of six. If I multiply by thirds over here, I'm going to end up with 27 on top. If I multiply by halves over here. I'm going to end up with 22 on top. And now I end up with 5, 6. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, don't you love when things work out? Ooh, watch the squiggy line. Woo-wee! Whoa! da Okay, so there we go, my friends. Yes, we did it with a number line. I was going to do it with a rectangular model, but I'm glad we did it with a number line. Now, what's this another record player and records? That's how strange is that? Is it a record player with some records? Or is it an attacking alligator? Ah! Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I do this. It's just fun. Hey, you know, you hear the music in the background. Hey, we're done, my friends. That's it. That's the end of another video. They're going so fast now. I can hardly hang on anymore. Well, my friends, it's time to say. Live long and prosper. 